and get this right around. <laughs> look at that. Look at that, look at that. Okay. Yeah, no more troubles from this. And again, um, if you're not experienced with doing something like this and working with metal, highly, highly recommend a very tough pair of work gloves because this metal that I'm ripping is razor sharp. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Mission accomplished. Okay. Now, next part is. Okay, we're going to bend this over. So that I don't lose this cable down inside here. That would not be fun. Simple. Just two wire nuts on the end, and you've got a black lead that should be the one that the power comes through if it's wired correctly. That is what's referred to as the hot lead. Then this one here is white. And that is what's referred to as the neutral um, that the power comes back and through. Over here, there's a bare copper that actually, uh, this lamp was not, especially being an outdoor fixture, um, this is your ground wire, it was not connected to anything. It should be connected to this post or the lamp head itself, or both, preferably. Now, if you notice, I took those wire caps off very, very carefully, even though I checked to be sure that the power is off to this. You always double check, okay? Um, there's been times where myself and many other electricians um, thought we had power off to it, but, and we actually sort of did, but what we found out is uh, somebody did some creative wiring and there was power that was being delivered by another circuit or another uh, branch. So um, I like uh, breathing and heart uh, pumping. So, okay, we're going to use a voltmeter here. There's light testers and a variety of other things that you can use to uh, check it. Um, uh, as well as uh, the, the emergency method, which would be to just short circuit that. Um, which could cause sparks, damage wiring, etc. Anyway, okay, we are going to set this right now. It's on the uh, DC range. Okay, and actually, an interesting thing, we're going to do a video. Um, Bolt Edison and uh, Nikola Tesla, Nikolai Tesla, um, and I think Ben Franklin was another one, uh, talked about energy fields that are all around us. And as you can see, Although it's very small, it's in millivolts. Um, oh, now it just neutralized. Oh, no, there we go. And this is actually, um, this is the electricity. Uh, when it went to neutral, the wind stopped blowing. No, oh, there we go. It's calm. There comes a breeze. Look at that. Just by wind, passing these two test leads separated about two inches apart, we have electricity in the air. Okay, so we're going to put this on, we're going to hit the function, and we want to go to AC volts, okay? Uh, AC is what um, this operates on, alternating current. So, all right, and we're going to check this just to verify. Okay, now this a little feature on uh, a lot of uh, gauges and multimeters. They have a place for you to 
set one of the probes in, or both of them, but set one probe in so I'm not trying to um, hold the meter with one hand and a probe, i am only got two hands, so. Um, all right, now this is the neutral. And it's just showing very, very trace, um, actually ten thousandths of a volt. And we're gonna just check to ground. Actually, it increases, check that out. Okay, now we're gonna check the other one to ground. That one's dead. Well, there's no power to it. And we're going to check both of them. Okay. And just to show you, um, I'm just going to put the two meters, two meter uh, probes on the same one and watch it'll go right to zero and stay there. I love it. This is a super sensitive meter. It picks up down to um, the thousandth of a volt. That's uh, three, three places past the decimal point. Very, very sensitive instrument. Okay, now we know what the power is off. We know it's safe. So we're going to get on with this and get this out of here. Okay, good view. This is how uh, bad this thing was condition that it was in. Pretty rough. Time to be replaced. Okay. Now, being very careful again because of the sharp edges and I'm not wearing gloves. Okay. Wire is going to stay up by itself. There we go. And off it goes. Okay. Now, to do this job right, so, my father and my grandfather, if you're going to do something, you might as well do it right. So, we're going to wire brush it. Get as much of this loose rust off as we can. All right, let's spend a whole lot of time on it. Break this little scale here off. And this pipe definitely, um, it was galvanized. Um, and actually, the original paint was black. Okay. This actually is the original paint that was on there. Okay. So, not to make this a huge project, I could take uh, sandpaper and you know, really grind it and do some, you know, heavy-duty stuff, but um, we're not going to do that today because uh, it's just not really that necessary. Um, but we're going to take this. Now that we've got that all clean, I'm just going to take these, put them down inside so that I don't paint my wiring. I'm going to get a can of spray paint, and we're going to give this a little quick paint job. Got our can of spray paint. This is one of the best paints out there. Um, covering names because uh, I'd like to get some endorsements uh, and sponsors that uh, um, will help me further and do more of these projects more frequently. Um, so, you know, when that happens, then I'll share some of my secrets of uh, my favorite things to uh, to use. But for now, we're just going to call this spray paint. I'm staying out of the wind, and because of the wind, I'm painting a little bit closer than I normally would spray paint, 
just to get a nice coat on here. And I'm being careful, the wind is blowing this way, so I'm being careful not to get into the path of the spray. Uh, And notice, I let go of the trigger every time I uh, finish a pass. Just on something like this, a touch-up is little short strokes. If I were painting a full panel, it would be longer strokes, such as this. And these are just blending strokes to blend it into the lower areas. Okay. All right. Now we need to let that dry for just a bit. that's drying we're gonna well that's drying we're gonna see what we got to do here with this okay now there is the ground layer which actually I, I would have to look back and see when uh, it became standard to um, actually have a ground wire like this one does we can see it in there um, that copper wire is connected to the base of the lamp socket Actually, the upper part of this entire lamp is plastic. There's two Phillips screws that, uh, two Phillips screws, one here, one here, that uh, removes the top. And we have three mounting holes to mount this. And uh, one of the other things that I had done uh, prior to this installation was checked to make sure that I've got the right size. It would really suck if um, you know I get to this point here and I go to put this on and I find out that this is either too big or too small. So um, usually if you've got a standard lamp post and you buy a standard lamp um, you got a pretty good chance of them being the same but there are different sizes. There's thinner ones and wider ones depending on the heights and of the pole and where it's at. So you always want to make sure that things are going to match up. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to, while this is drying, we're going to work on this here. So we're going to take these uh, screws out here. It would be nice if I had a workbench to do this on, but uh, I'm able to steady it enough in my hand to uh, get the job done. Okay, now, okay, even though this is plastic, this is a machine screw. Okay, there could be a um, metal sleeve or collar. Yep, I see a brass collar in there, a little collet um, that uh, this screw screws into. Important thing, it's tiny, we're out in the lawn, you don't want to lose it. Set it where it's not going to fall and get lost. Okay. All right. Second screw, and you can't see it on the camera, but I'm actually holding the bottom of the lamp up against my belly, holding it tight to me, um, in place of having a workbench to work on. It's, uh, a lot of times, uh, I've done things up on ladders that I've been 20, 30 feet up in the air. And I'm doing this, and uh, there's not a whole lot of workspace. So, okay, now we got all right. We've got the lamp open, and inside you've got the socket. And you'll also notice that there's four drain holes, which the old lamp didn't have. Again, the drain holes, just like the ground wire, um, have become standard as uh, people figured out. Uh, why people got shocked or um, things failed sooner than they should have or what have you. Now, um, what we're going to do here is uh, the old fixture um, had just your standard 60 watt incandescent bulb. Okay. Um, 
uses 60 watts to deliver the light. Okay, and this is, uh, if I can read this, yep, this is 840 lumens. If you can read that right there. Um, lumens is a measure of light. It tells you how bright it is, okay? We're typically used to gauging, like this is a 60 watt bulb. Uh, we're used to gauging brightness of light bulbs by the wattage, uh, which is a good indication. Usually the higher the wattage, the brighter the bulb, okay? Um, but two 60 watt bulbs, even if they're incandescent, can produce more or less lumens. Okay, we're going to replace this with a modern LED bulb, which this, um, this produces 760 lumens, um, which is uh, not that much less. It's really not a noticeable difference, but the um, energy use is going to be significantly less because um, this only draws 10 watts of energy. So you can leave this bulb on six times longer than uh, the original incandescent bulb to get pretty much the same light. So there's a big energy savings here. Um, plus, the old lamp had clear glass and this one has a frosted glass. So it's not so much, it, this will give a much more pleasing uh, look. Um, and this is also a daylight temperature bulb, and that gets into the color of the light in degrees Kelvin, which, that's a whole nother video. Okay, so just screw in a light bulb into the socket. Okay, that part is complete. Okay, bulb is in there. And um, if this was an incandescent bulb, that would be the last thing that I would do, because just in put mounting this and all that stuff, shocks could damage the filament and either kill the bulb or shorten the length of it. So, um, But just to save time here, we're going to put that in there, and then we're going to get the top all dressed, and um, we should be about ready to uh, put this thing on. Okay, well, you remember that not dropping it in the, the screw in the grass thing? Um, when I took the screw out of this one, because it was sitting on a chair that I'm using here as a bench, um, it fell out of my nimble little fingers, and um, it's now in the grass. So we're going to have to go get the missing screw finder. Okay, now I'm back with my missing screw finder. I don't have it. This is actually one that I've made. You can get a lot of uh, things that... Uh, are already pre-made um, you know, magnets that uh, are on a post or a wand to uh, do exactly what I'm about to do. But this is an extremely powerful magnet that was taken out of a computer hard drive. And it's a ring, and it's got a steel plate on the back of it. And what this steel plate does is it's called a pole plate, and it intensifies the pattern, the magnetic pattern, and literally, without anything on here, if you were to set this down on a piece of steel, you wouldn't be able to get it off without um, some sort of tool to uh, get it loose from the surface. You could not pick this up. And we're going to actually, one of the reasons, um, I'm going to actually just mount a uh, cabinet knob uh, right through here. Um, so it'll be a nice little handy type of thing and we're actually going to do some experiments with um, the power of this little gem. So we're going to use it to find the screw right now. Well, as luck would have it, um, the screws, uh, they're a good grade of probably stainless steel. There's very, very, very low iron content in here so they don't rust. Okay, even as powerful as this magnet is, okay, it barely, barely holds the screw, and you actually have to make physical contact before it'll pick it up. So, uh, this means a trip to uh, the hardware store. 
and uh, again with experience looking at this um, it's most likely an 832 it's pretty standard in electrical stuff um, and it's a flush mount screw so um, I'll be sure to uh, get a stainless steel one it looks like it's about a quarter inch by 832 okay so we'll set this aside so we don't lose it and we'll proceed with uh, the project because uh, I even got down on my hands and knees and like looked real real close moving the grass around and finding a little black screw on brown dirt in the grass is not easy the uh, top here um, it needs finishing touch which uh, they call a finial which they shipped um, to save space in the box basically and uh, make less chance of uh, being damaged in shipment they put this in with uh, that bag of goodies that uh, I showed you earlier okay now okay it's pretty simple being in there it's just finger tight so okay pretty much we have a nut And here is a lock washer. Lock washer helps resist um, it from loosening up on its own. Then we have just a regular flat washer, and that distributes uh, the pressure um, so that it doesn't deform the uh, plastic top. Okay, now there's one other thing there's a little seal. Okay. That we're going to leave right there. This is a silicone seal that is there to prevent moisture from getting in here. So here we can see, you can see the seal in place there. And we're going to do this in the reverse order that we took them off. We're going to put the flat washer on. We're going to put the block washer on. And we're going to put the nut on. Okay. And we just turn it. Okay. Now we're going to check and look to see that the top, the finial, is lined up with the lamp before I tighten this up. Okay. And now we got it straight. Now you could actually, like if it didn't have that seal on there, you could actually probably hold the nut and just screw this hand tight until you know it's tight and you get it where you want it but that would damage that little silicone seal okay now there's several ways you can tighten this um, the best ways would be with a wrench okay um, you can get either a socket wrench or uh, an offset box wrench or an open end wrench on it um, being that it doesn't have to be tightened very much, we're going to use the slip joint pliers. Okay, and again, if you're up on a ladder, you want to carry the minimum tools with you. So uh, a lot of electricians, these slip joint pliers um, are a very, very handy tool to have. Okay, so basically, that's the full closed on that. And if we slip it over, now it's full closed, but we still have a gap, so that makes it easier to get on a nut like this okay and we just not a lot of tightness here I only did it maybe about a half turn past half uh, hand tightened okay we double check make sure that uh, the finial is on straight and we're ready to put this all together and make it work this wiring back out and we got a couple of problems okay number one we didn't cut much of this exterior insulation off okay so we're gonna have to do that is it you should be able to separate these wires a little bit better than uh, this is definitely looks like it was a handyman job uh, something that was not put in uh, even back in the day um, or a licensed electrician would um, have not done it quite this way so and again 
along that score line. Wow, was this brutal. So we're going to have to get a different knife. So we're going to use the retractable utility knife here, which has a very, very sharp point and tip. And for safety, we're going to bring it back to only that far out. That way if it does slip, I lose control of it, and I do end up cutting myself. Um, it's going to be a very shallow cut versus a very deep cut. Okay, so... Okay, now, this hand I keep behind where I'm cutting and in the opposite direction of the direction that I'm drawing the knife. Oh yeah, this is cutting much better. Okay. Alright, now, instead of trying to cut in one deep cut, do it twice. Just pushing gently each time, and a third time if you need to. And again, with this brittle wire, I'm going to get the pliers and see what's going on here. Basically, this wire inside this pipe uh, in the hot summertime, um, this wire is like in an oven. So all of the uh, plasticizers that keep it soft and flexible have basically been cooked out of it. And the other thing is, it's also, oh, that's right. This is also what they call underground sheath cable that the uh, two leads are encased inside of um, individual. There's the ground wire coming up through the bottom. Forgot about that. I wasn't expecting to see this because of the age of the installation. But apparently um, they didn't run a conduit or anything. And this cable here is um, actually a cable that can be buried underground. will make it easier now that I know what we're dealing with. Okay, we're going to turn this this way and we're going to cut it down the spine here. As you can see, there's a little bit of a rib. That's where this ground conductor goes in. Okay. So, I'm going to score along that rib very carefully. Now I'm able to peel the ground conductor out, and I should not do... Okay. Okay. Alright, now after setting the knife down, um, pull the ground conductor out of here, and okay, and with the diagonal cutters, we're going to nibble down through the center of this, being careful not to damage either the hot or the neutral uh, wires. Basically, I get in line here with the center. There we go. Now I can peel it. Okay. Because if this was not old cable, I wouldn't be able to do this pull it by hand, I'd have to actually cut, cut, cut. Okay. Now we've got a good separation between our conductors. And the next thing we're going to want to do is clean these. I guess the, uh, the copper is oxidized. It'll still make contact, but it'll make a better contact if we clean them. So I'm just going to wire brush them. You could use um, scotch brake pads. Those work really, really good. Steel pull or even sandpaper. But I just want to clean them, get any corrosion and oxidation, or the worst of it off anyway.
next uh, we have here a little packet that's got uh, three sheet metal screws for putting the housing on and three wire nuts now um, when we get to doing this there's two schools of thought on using the wire nuts um, some people tend to wrap electrical tape around them uh, which in some places it's very advisable it helps um, to uh, make sure you know keep them secure what have you um, however in an exterior application wrapping it with electrical tape is going to give the potential if they get wet the moisture is going to be trapped in here and it's going to cause electrical problems okay so we're going to go just the good old-fashioned way unlike the way it was well yeah, that was the old uh, we're going to um, forego using any electrical tape on there and just make sure that they're good and secure.